Okay, white supremacy is a packaged deal, part four. Okay, this part four is going to be a bit more pragmatic and not as esoteric as forthcoming videos in this series and the three videos that have already preceded this particular video. Now, oftentimes you hear heretics vaguely say that we are all one. God is no respecter of persons. There is neither Greek or Jew. We are all one. They say this to nullify somehow what you see with your eyes, and more importantly, what is written in the scriptures. For example, when the scriptures say we are all one, it refers to believers who incorporate the body of Christ. Using that word body, of course, that's saying that metaphorically so that you have an idea of the structure, the hierarchy of the body of Christ, the proverbial body of Christ. Okay, but when you're looking at a natural body, a human body, it has a head. It has arms, it has an abdomen, it has feet. So, among these believers, within the body of Christ, there is rank. Okay, not because God is a respecter of persons, but because of sin and the accumulation of the sin debt. Okay, as I always say, man cannot outlive his sins. All right? You are responsible for the sins of your forefathers. Also, if we are all one and we are all equal, why would God create a people who has melanin and is in harmony with the sun and another people are clearly the weaker recessive gene? It's no secret that the sun expresses violence against their skin and turns their skin red for a reason. Okay, the word skin, S-K-I-N, has rooted in it the word sin, S-I-N. Also, the root word of the word sign, S-I-G-N, you know, like sign your name, you know, your signatures for documents and contracts, which the Most High commanded men not to get into that. Well, he didn't command men. He just let the fallen angels know that men were not created for such purpose in the book of Enoch. Okay, but I don't have time to get into that. But the word sign, S-I-G-N, sin is rooted in that word, S-I-N. Okay, and this nation, by the way, is built off of signatures, which, of course, that's how this whole dilemma leads to wars. And what are the wars fought over? Morsel of fool. <laughs> the thing that got Esau cursed, okay, it's fought over oil, it's fought over minerals and land space, etc. Again, that's the very thing that got Esau cursed from God, because the scriptures say, he who saves his life shall lose it, and he who loses his life for Christ's sake shall find it. So now you can see how I'm connecting this to a salvation message because the salvation of Esau has always been at stake. And it's not about one people being better than the other people. No, that's not how God operates. In the context of the scripture, that's what he means by he's no respecter of person. Okay, he's not going to overlook another person's sin just because he made one superior physically than the other. That's what he means by that. And if I'm to go to another level, the Most High compensated for what he gave the so-called black man physically. He's given the so-called white man in this dispensation economically, okay, militarily, all right? So that's a just God, but he's not going to overlook your sin and the sins of your forefathers. I hope you're following me thus far, okay? Because the scriptures say the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So as I mentioned earlier in this series, judge ye not that ye be not judged is based on this concept, okay? I already established in this series that the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 12 says, Woe to those who build a town on bloodshed 
and establishes a city by iniquity. So going to Revelation chapter 2, 9, it says, I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. So who is he speaking to when he talks about tribulation and poverty? Okay, you, can you see how the two connect? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 12 and Revelation 2 9. Okay, you have to put those things into context and connect the scriptures. Going to the book of Numbers chapter 35, 33, it says, You shall not pollute the land, for blood defile the land and requires blood of the one who shed it. Now, this ties with one of my trademark series, Satanic Employment, which I've already established begets devil obligations. Remembering that I already broke down Joel chapter 3, verse 3 through 6 earlier in this series. And that states that the Gentiles have taken the prized possessions of the Most High. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Well, since white supremacy has had over 200 years to situate itself here in America, many are dumbfounded to what constitutes hard work. Okay, the matrix has conditioned many people to view hard work as evil. <laughs> they also, in turn, which is backwards, they view that desk job, which constitutes laziness, it's harder to work with your hands than it is to work at a desk job. Okay, I'm just putting things into this proper context, give you an idea of what this matrix constitutes, what it represents. Because the scriptures say, let every man work with his hands. That's what the scriptures say, and I'll get to that. But to get that high paying job in corporate America, you don't have to work with your hands. You see that? <laughs> Why is that? Because white supremacy was found off of this principle or lack thereof. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 says, Let every man work with his hands and let the thief steal no longer so that he has something to give. You see that? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. <laughs> and many take that scripture out of context because they've been conditioned by the matrix. And they just refer that scripture to Pookie and Ray Ray. Not understanding that Pookie and Ray Ray has a system that's constantly pressing on their neck. Okay, the scriptures say that, but as I established earlier in this series, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. I believe it's Job chapter 9, verse 24. That's what the Bible says. Okay, the quintessential man who fought to eat and not work is the so called white man. But there are so many layers to the matrix that needs to be peeled back. Okay, even a Christian church is so incredulous to how sophisticated Satan's kingdom is. The biblical men of old worked with their hands, and the women stayed home as caretakers. Satan has reversed it in this modern matriarchal kingdom. He wants to get the women out, out in, the, in the public where they can be visible and seduce the men. He wants the women to have the Jezebel spirit. You see that? In this kingdom, women make their own money. Okay, at least most of them are able to make their own money. Okay, they have more access to men on social media also. And they're not prepared for Revelation 18, which is the end of white supremacy. Best believe that. Because they adhere to Satan, who instructs them to reverse the order of God. Also, the enemy knows what Christ meant in Luke chapter 6, 24, when he said, Woe to you who are rich, because you already receive your comfort. Because remember, in Revelation 18, it says, In one hour, all their riches came to nothing. Talking about the merchants of the earth, the kings of the earth, okay? Those who are in charge of the earth's lease agreement, okay? This is why Christ said, 
in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you cannot serve God and mammon. All right, guys, hit the cash app. Hit, hit the cash app. Hit that like button. Okay. Share this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Okay. I feel the Holy Spirit moving as I'm doing this video. In Luke chapter 14, verse 26 through 28, he said, bear your cross. Okay. Bear your cross. Follow him. Count the cost to build the tower. All right. That's summarizing Luke 14, 26 through 28. Okay, what man who doesn't pick up his cross and bear his cross and follow Christ, what is the tower he's talking about? Okay, what's the tower that a man will have to build? We know it's not physically. Okay, he's speaking metaphorically. Okay, for the Gentiles to build their tower is to return back what was stolen. And not only do that, but they got to follow Christ thereafter. Okay, this is why also. In Ephesians 4.28, again, he commands them to work with their hands and steal no more, okay? Because, again, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God, okay? Now I'm putting that into context. You see that? Okay, I don't have time to go there, but there's a scripture that says the sacrifices of God is a broken and contrite spirit. So really, those who inherit the kingdom of God, because the scriptures say, through much tribulation, one must go through to inherit the kingdom of God. So let me ask you this. That's, well, let me say this first. That's God's payment. That's what you need to pay to inherit the kingdom of God. You got a lot of heretics talking about once saved, always saved, and that's a false doctrine. Okay, how can you pay men? That's why he said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and give unto God what is God's. You see that? So in closing, let me ask you this and let me know in the comments. How do you purchase a broken and contrite spirit? Okay, again, because so-called white supremacists, they're the ones who indoctrinated people with this once saved, always saved. They're the ones who champion once saved, always saved, thinking that you can just escape the judgments of the Most High with the sinner's prayer. And that's not how it works. Christ said, again, count the cost that it's going to take to build the tower. And these are the people who don't even take the time to count their blessings, let alone counting what it's going to take to inherit the kingdom of God. Because Matthew chapter 7, 13 and 14, giving you short version, it says two things primarily. Most people are going to the lake of fire when they die. That's number one. Number two, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to eternal life. And there are few who find it. All right. But saying that you can inherit the kingdom of God just by saying the sinner's prayer and admitting to Christ that you're a sinner and asking him to come into your heart then you just return back to your old wicked ways. That's just like going to the dealer and being adamant that a Lambo Urus costs $50 and you're justifying it by telling the dealer you have a driver's license and you pay 30 bucks for the driver's license. Therefore, the Lambo should cost that amount. But the dealer in turn tells you, no, it's going to cost $500,000. And then you're adamant with him going back and forth that that's how much it's going to cost. No, that's what it's like explaining this whole salvation thing to the Gentiles, to the privileged heathen. OK, ain't no way you getting into the kingdom without parting ways with your houses. You got to come up out of what was stolen. All right. Nevertheless, the scriptures say the genuineness of your faith. Is more precious than gold. It's tried by fire. So how is it tried by fire? All right. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments and enjoy the rest of your day.